Without further ado, to stay on time, we'll start with the first talk from Daniel. And I'm not introducing speakers even though I know most of them for brevity. Thank you for that kind introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Daniel Himmelstein, a PhD candidate here at UCSF. And this is how I think of scientific communication currently. I call it Brem's Allegory of Academia, where scientists are too busy struggling under an inefficient system to take a break and look at what's wrong and get great gains in efficiency. So what's the situation? What's the problem now? First of all, peer review is often counterproductive because it happens too late. It happens once you've already finished your project and not when you're designing it when that advice would actually be helpful. Second of all, it's too rigid. You can't communicate back and forth with the reviewers, so it's not effective. And incentives are missing. Reviewers don't uh, have good incentives to uh, do a good job because oftentimes they're not, their identities aren't even public and they're not getting rewarded. Next, the process of what goes on to make your study or make your paper is invisible, it's lost, it's not publicized or documented. This means that mistakes are repeated, efforts are duplicated uh, with yourself and between labs, and that science in general is irreproducible. And finally, attribution is ineffective. It's really hard to know who did what and therefore how to reward them. So for example, that's why people are so focus on impact factors because there's not other good ways or there aren't very many good ways yet of seeing other factors of what people did and their contributions. So, at the event last year, I met uh, the founder of ThinkLab and started a radically different way of doing science, which is open, online, uh, in real time. So I posted my proposal uh, from the day, the day I created it, and then recruited people from the communi community to have discussions with and give me advice on how to improve my project and to help me analyze and interpret my results. And not only that, we got a, uh, some pilot funding so the people who contribute, they're rated by the community and actually get paid for their efforts. So it's, we call it massively collaborative open science. We've had 22 reviewers over 53 discussions, and just in this short time had 293 comments. Here you can see, actually, two of the people, Antoine and Mackenzie, are in attendance. But what I'd like to point out is the great diversity of people, all the different institutions we've brought together on one multi- or disciplinary project. So here are my reflections. That uh, doing science openly and in real time like this has allowed me to assemble a high quality network of open scientists. It's made me think before I do something, because I have to justify it in writing, and I also have the organization of everything I did and why I did it, uh, leading to better efficiency and accelerated impact. So here's my public contributions on GitHub, and you can see very clearly when I start doing ThinkLab. I start making way more public contributions. And uh, along with that came <coughs> much better uh, recognition and brand development personally. And the founder, Jesse Spaulding's in attendance, raise your hand so you can speak to them if you're interested in putting projects up there. The project that I'm working on is creating a network for drug repurposing. It looks like this out of bird's eye view. It's big, it has 50,000 types of nodes. I mean 50,000 nodes of 10 different types and 3 million edges. Uh, these come from 28 different public resources. And because we're into open science, we want to release the network so other people can use it, and we want to make the analysis reproducible, so that means uh, releasing the data along every stage of the analysis. But there's a problem. Right now, there are a lot of restrictions on how you can use data. Uh, the first is copyright, which is automatically granted to original works of authorship, uh, giving exclusive rights. And an additional restriction is a contract. So some resources require you to enter into a contract to even get access to the resource. And so specifically, we face these complications. We had nine resources that didn't post any license, which means all rights are reserved. You um, cannot copy or redistribute it, and contacting them has not been effective. We also face unclear licenses, where we would have to email them and get clarification, which was laborious and slow. Uh, next, we had some licenses that forbid redistribution, 
So for example, MSIGDB, a publicly funded project, the Broad Institute put on a very restrictive license. Another big issue is reusing data from publication supplements, which actually the authors have signed copyright transfer agreements with the journals. And this is an issue I'd like to expose in the coming months. And uh, <laughs> I will skip to my last slide. Uh, that after a 5,000 word discussion and much effort, we found a solution. And for you to break these chains, I recommend releasing your data as CC0 into the public domain. So uh, look that up. 